des virages évidemment les, les plus difficiles. On sait qu'il y a pour la première fois. Hello everybody and welcome to Tour in France for the fourth round of the 2013 NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. This major event is held, like in the USA, on a novel. The official NASCAR series in Europe has a new name since the signing of a long-term partnership between the organizers and Wheel and Engineering. For this first race, NASCAR racers like Max Pappis, Giles Thornton and Rick Crawford have come to France. On pole for the Michelin 100 is Frédéric Gabillon in 13.985, behind the Frenchman come Italian Nicolo Rocca and Eric Ellery. At the start, Gabillon has earned to first place from his teammate Eric Ellery. Nicola Rocca comes under threat straight away from Willy Busena, who goes through on the inside. Under Villarino, the championship leader is stuck in traffic in eighth place. He's running side by side on the banking with his teammate Anthony Ganto. After a few laps, the leading duo begins to pull away slightly while Vincent Gono passes Nicola Rocca into fourth. Villarino tried to get past Nordstrom on the inside in the first corner, but it doesn't work. Already the leaders are among the tailenders. Jan Zimmer in number 64 uses Nicola Godin to snatch third place from Busena. After 25 laps, the top five positions are held by Gabillon, Ellery, Zimmer, Busena and Villarino. Guillaume Russo has a spin in his Ford Mustang and enjoys rest slightly in the incident. On the restart, Gabion remains in front, followed by Ellery and Zima. Villarino is fourth in front of Gono. Max Papis in number 33 overtakes Busena on the inside. The 2009 NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series champion has lost three places and he is now ninth under threat from his teammate Bruno Cosa. Further back in the field, woman driver Carol Perrin in number 42 is making a good comeback. She started in 19th position and is now 11th behind Anthony Gabarino. The Tailanders stand in on the inside to let the ladies overtake it. Everybody has to find some room on this short 600 meter over. Hugo Beck wanted to let Villarino pass as quickly as possible and makes a small mistake. The RDV competition driver gets away with it. Zimmer has even passed the 2011 NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series champion Eric Ellery just before the safety car comes to allow the marshal to clean the track. Gabillon makes the best restart closely followed by Zimmer and Ellery. Behind Vincent Gono passes Villarino and is no fifth. Oh, Further back in the field, Fred Nordstrom fights against Charles Thornton and they collide! The Swede, third in the overall classification, has to retire. On the restart, Ellery tries to pass Timo on the inside and the two cars touch. Ellery loses control of his car and it's under Villarino, the unlucky victim of this incident. Frederick Gabillon in blue number five still leads. He has been in front on every lap so far. And behind, Vincent Gono and Nicola Rocca tag each other. To ensure that the finish is under a green flag, the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series official add an extra two laps to this race. Gabion again makes the best start and Max Papi shoots past Timo on the inside. The Swiss was some damage on the left hand rear, is now under threat from Davide Amaduzzi. Bertrand Baguette in number 20 passes Roman Yanetta. Final corner for Gabion in front of Papis. And Amadouzzi overtakes Jan Zima on the finish line. Gabion scores his first win of the year from Italian Max Papis and Davide Amadouzzi. Zima is the first junior, while Stefan Yagi wins in the Challenger Trophy. I'm very happy. It's the third time I've led a race, and on two occasions I was panning off. In the end, we've won, and it's done to the work done by the whole team. I got into the car, never having raced before on an oval, and it was just perfect. I really have to thank Claude, our engineer, and Joaquin, our team manager. We've all worked hard since the start of the season to score this victory. Two pole position and a win. We have to try to do the same thing tomorrow. On the podium, Gabion is surrounded by Papis and Amaluzzi.
And we are back for the second elite race, the Tour Événement 100 at the Tour Speedway. For the third consecutive time this season, Frederic Gabillon starts from pole. He leads Eric Ellery, Anda Villarino and Jan Zima. Gabion makes the best start, but Ander Villarino is on the inside line. He puts pressure and demotes Elari from second. The reigning champion wants to put behind him his race one poor results. Behind the leaders, the drivers are careful in the banking. The inside line remains the best, and Elari overtakes Villarino on the restart. The battle is still hot between the reigning champion and the former champion of the series. And in the pack, Carol Perra number 42 car spins after a contact from Nordstrom and Gandon. A bad issue for the woman driver who celebrates today her birthday. At the restart, Rapido Racing by still teammates Gabion and Elari hold on to the lead. Villarino is third. And Max Papis in the number 33 blue car gets past Jan Zima on the inside in corner one. Leaders are back on the rear bumper of slower drivers. And a short track traffic is a very important factor to build a victory on. Hillary in the number 100 car takes the outside line as Gabion chooses the inside to overtake Nicolas Godin, one lap down. Hillary grabs the lead. Gabion won't lead every lap today. Hillary, Gabion, Villarino, Papis, Cousin, Yaneta lead the way after 39 laps. And the battle is still intense in the pack. Zima spins after a contact with Willy Busena. The Swiss driver needs to make his way through the field to come back in the leading group again. We are halfway to the finish. Elari and Gabion still lead Villarino. Yaneta and Papis remains in the top five. With a well set up car, Gabion finally finds room to overtake Elari and comes back into the lead. Championship leader under Villarino and the number two TFT Banco Santander car tries to find his way in the traffic. And Bruno Cousin makes a perfect move on Max Papis on the inside line. He's no fit. And behind them, Natalie Maya and Fred Narsham touch. Less than 25 laps to go, drivers must remain careful. Gabion in the five blue car protects the inside line as Villarino tries to take advantage of Ellery, but it doesn't work. Villarino versus Ellery, that's the battle of the final stages of the race. Yes, with less than 10 laps to go, the Spaniard gets past the Frenchman. And Ellery spins on the banking after a contact with Max Papis. Green-white checkered finish. Drivers have two laps to go for the win. Gabion leads as Busena demotes Villarino from second place in turn one. Let's go on board with the 2012 champion. It's the last lap and Roman Yaneta tries to pass Villarino. They are side by side and there's a contact. Villarino is definitely not in a good mood this weekend. Finally finishes eighth ahead of Yaneta. Second victory for Gabi on wins from Busena, first in the junior trophy, and Swiss Dima, who makes his way through the field to come back from seventh to third in the last two laps. What a gift for his 23rd birthday. Vincent Gono thinks is the first challenger. A really great race. Compared to yesterday, it was very difficult because of the long runs. 30 or 35 laps on the green. Physically, it was very demanding. I'm very happy because the team did an amazing job from the start of the weekend. My engineer prepared a perfect car. A big thanks to the team, the mechanics, Eric from Steel Racing and Joaquin, Rapido's racing team manager. It was an eventful weekend for us and Joaquin will start from pole position in this afternoon's race. We are happy, we worked hard for that and we deserve it. After the tour meeting, Gabion moves up into second place in the standings. He's now 26 points behind the leader of Villarino and led Zimmer, the first junior by only 5 points. Bruno Cousin ninth in the standing is the new leader of the Challenger Trophy.
It's 2007 tour has gone all American over the course of a weekend. Every year, the American Tour Festival attracts some 40,000 people, and since 2012, it has hosted the overall round of the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. The 600 meter circuit is unique in Europe, and it, as it's made for on track action, it soon excited the interest of drivers and teams. Overall, yes, I began enjoying it more and more, and when the car's working well, you find your marks and finally, it's great fun. I think there are races that require intelligence and patience. 100 laps is pretty long. Everybody's a bit worried at the start about racing on this oval, and then they all really enjoy it. The organization is great, and people love oval racing. It's all about patience and keeping your car intact to the very end. On the over, the slightest error proved fatal. For this exceptional event, NASCAR drivers from the USA like Max Papis and young American Giles Thornton took up the challenge. I mean, the secret to be fast on an oval here is that uh, it's a very much of a team sport. Uh, you gotta be patient, but you gotta be aggressive when the door opens. You know, you can't think, and you just need to act on stuff. So that makes you understand, you know, how close the competition is and how important is the communication. It can be. Uh, at home, it's all bank stuff, uh, and then I like the flat. I like the flat tracks, and uh, it's very different. One corner you're going really hard, and then the other corner you're going really, really easy and hard off. Some series drivers like Anthony Garbarino have already competed in the USA and know how to race on ovals. If you want to be the quickest in the race, it's a question of being patient. You really have to bide your time not to make mistakes. The advantage on ovals is that you can fight your way back. In my first race, I punctured. I was two laps behind and I had two free passes. I got back on the same lap and I finished third in the junior category. On a normal circuit, you could never do that. Here, until the last lap, it's still all up for grabs. The Tour Speedway is special as this year it has a 9 degrees banked corner and a flat one. I think that having one flat, flat corner and one bank corner helped uh, you know, to kind of uh, make the oval less intimidating and make it a little bit more of, uh, of something that these guys that never race on an oval, they can understand a little bit better. The difference is the setup, first of all, because uh, in the US you can be more, much more extreme in the setup and uh, you can have a camber, uh, very strange for a European uh, idea, but it's uh, very good for to increase the speed in the entrance, uh, in the middle and the exit. Here it's a compromise, it's something in the middle, because uh, you can be extreme for uh, the banking, because uh, you, you, you would be very fast in the banking, but with no grip in the flat, because uh, if you are very extreme with the camber, you don't have uh, tires on the ground for the flat. And uh, in the opposite way, you can't be completely good for the flat because on the, on the banking, uh, you destroy the tires in five laps. The, the specific aspect of the novel is that suspension geometry is completely asymmetric compared to what you do on a normal circuit. The two inside wheels don't have a lot to do, so the tire pressures are very different. So are the inclinations, toins, or camber. On an oval, the spotter is very important. He is his driver's eyes and his advice help him to cope with the, what's happening. It's really important to have all this information with all the crashes and interruptions that occur. To be able to brake when necessary and not to go flat out. They have to be there to tell us about what's happening. It's crucial on an oval with cars that touch one another. The spotter is part of the team and is vital when it comes to putting on a performance or not. Thanks to the experience gained with more than 330 starts in NASCAR Truck Series, Rick Crawford talks about the enthusiasm of the European fans in Tour. Perfect atmosphere. I wish you'd take the camera and just look around 360 degrees. You see a lot of fans in the pit area. These tents here where you work on the cars, you really make it accessible for the fans. And this NASCAR Wheeling Euro Series is going to be really popular in the United States when the United States guys come over here to race. Tour Speedway with a huge success with several thousand spectators. The fans have already saved the date for the 2014 rendezvous. 
Back to racing with the first open category race, Nuff 100, and on pole position is Anthony Gandon followed by Josh Burden, Joaquin Gabaron, Julian Guppy, and Vincent Gono. It's a 100 lap race with a flying start. Paul Cito Gandon makes the best start and defense in his lead from Burden Gabaron. Burden tries to go around on the outside and the banking, but it doesn't work. Start with Gandon still in front from Burden, Gabaron, and Goupy. Two abreast on the banking, the open race has got off to a flying start. Gandon leads Burden, Gabaron, and Rousseau in number 13 car, who's got past Goupy. The Frenchman loses another place to Philippe Stevny from Belgium. And Russo is passed by four cars on the outside line. He falls back to eight. Oh, Julian Guppy ends up past on Guillaume Russo touch in the first corner. Guppy gets away with it. He doesn't hit the concrete wall and can rejoin. On a restart, Anthony Gandon is on the inside line. While Joaquin Gabaron in the number five is passed by Australian Josh Burden and Vincent Gonneau from France. Drivers are really going pedal to the metal in this race. And a new contact, Enzo Pastor tips Stefan Sabates into a spin. Gandon is now under threat from Burden. The Australian nudges his direct rival in the championship out of the way and takes the lead. A good move by the Scorpius Racing Forza Motorsport driver and Gandon in number 7, TFT Leclerc. And behind another collision, this time between Frank Vialas and Jerome Laurent. On the restart, Burden is on the inside and is not letting anybody pass. Gano is second from Gono and Guppy, who tries to get by his rival on the inside. And it works! The driver on number 44 snatches third place. Julian Guppy is no second. The Frenchman has made a great comeback after his spin at the start of the race. And he's nudged by Anthony Gandon! Horror is for the rapid racing by steel driver who can enjoy. At the restart, here is a slight contact between Gono and Burton. Julian Guppy takes advantage of it to get on the inside line. And at the same time, Guillaume Rousseau passes Gono. The tailenders move out of the way to let the leaders through. Anthony Gandon is second, just behind Burton. The Frenchman slides and loses second place to Goupy and Rousseau. Only two laps left in the first open race and Goupy is all over but he shoots past the Australian on the inside. The Frenchman ends on to an unexpected victory. It's Goupy's first win as he manages to find the right openings in the dying laps of the race. Anthony Gandon completes the top three. Thanks to his fifth place, Gabaron wins the Gentleman's Trophy. Philippe Bodinia scores his first top 10 finish of the year and wins the Legend Trophy. An ecstatic Julian Guppy celebrates its victory in style. I had to fight right to the very end, and that's what I did. We were very far behind at one moment, and I took full advantage of the restarts. I was always pushing in the race, and I was able to pull back places without making mistakes, so we finished first. I'm very proud of the public here in Tours, as I'm from the center. I live in Orléans, so they are my neighbors, and I'm very happy to be here.
On pole for the second open race of the tour weekend, the La Calandrette is Joaquin Gabarro. It's the first time the Swiss has started from this position in front of the championship leaders, Josh Burden and Anthony Gandon. At the start, Gabarron moves over on Burden and is hit by Volpato. Luckily, the two drivers are able to continue. At the restart, Gabarron in blue number five holds on to his lead and Gandon gets past the championship leader, Josh Burden, in the first corner. Behind, Philippe Stevny in number 88 tries to pass Joseph Cosella before the banking in front of the many spectators who've turned up this weekend. Vincent Gono in number 15 and Julian Goupy in the white car number 44 are at a hammer and tongs for fourth place. Restart on lap 26 after Christophe de Fialon spins and retires. Gabaron still leads, but Italian Renzo Calcinati passes Anthony Gandon, as done Vincent Gono, who slips through on the inside of the banking. There's nothing between the car battling for the leading position. Gandon in number seven is overtaken by Julian Guppi and Josh Byrne losing two places. the previous day's winner is pushing like crazy on this track and snatched his second place behind his teammate Gabaron. The French driver in number 44 slices past Gabaron on lap 40 after a perfect pass. Gabaron is now under threat from Calcinati, Burden and Volpato. Behind Stevny and Joey collide! Guppy has to do it all over again and is now back in fourth place. Gabaron leads from Calcinati in number 68, Volpato and Russo. Volpato takes advantage of a slight contact between Gabaron and Calcinati. And the 17-year-old Italian gets past the leader and the banking. It's a great move by the driver in number 64, who is in front for the first time this season. The leading trio consists of Volpato, Gabaron and Bird. The blue number five gets into trouble and behind its panic. Gonna hit Sabades. Goopy and Gandon also suffer in the incident. Restart with 25 laps to go till the end. Volpato leads Burden. Gabaron is third and hugs the inside line. Burden is all over Volpato. The Australian pulls off a bump and run, nudges Volpato and takes the lead. It's the first time Burden is in front in this race. Watch out! Guppy and Gabaron, the two rapid racing by steel drivers collide, and the pole sitter has to restart from the back of the field. Restart with three laps to go to the finish. Burden fights off the two Italian Calcinati and Volpato. Number 64 uses the inside line to take second place. Burden rounds the last corner and the Scorpus racing towards a motorsport driver takes the checked flag to win the race from Gabriele Volpato and Renzo Calcinati. Josh Burden congratulating by his team manager is over the moon. The Australian opens up a gap in the overall classification. I really wanted to win today. Yesterday we was leading up to the last lap and uh, I got a little knock out of the way so I thought I'll take it on the chin and we'll come out and I'll learn and uh, we'll uh, have a crack today. So I had the championship in mind, but uh, off the start, starting on second, I lost a few positions. But as the race went on, I kind of planned it and it went to plan and the safety cars went my way, so I was quite lucky. Uh, it was a really good race there and uh, I'm glad to get a win on an oval. Uh, it's, it's good fun here and the atmosphere, I, I think it's a great event. In the championship, Burden has now a 26-point lead over Gandon and 36 in hand over Goupy. Gabaron leads the Gentleman Trophy and Lauren still in front in the Legion Trophy. The next round of the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series will take place at Monza on September 28 and 29. See you there. <laughs>